a my key two three three. Just uh, just adjust some some settings. Just bear with me, boys. Just wanna make sure everything looks good for you guys. So it seems I'm still in 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so that's fine. So, okay, guys. So basically, the point of this um, live stream is I'm going to be updating my OSD. I'm just going to make a few changes. But um, generally, I get a lot of questions from people asking how do I do um, my OSD. So I thought I may as well do a live stream so you guys can kind of tag along, learn what the settings mean, what what happens when you change. Um, specific settings and, and maybe you'll learn a little bit about the MSI afterburner on screen display um, function and how to use the software a little bit more so um, the first thing you're going to need to have obviously is MSI afterburner um, this works with something called Reva Tuna statistics server now this controls your font size for me um, I have my font size at 7 but you can obviously change it to what you want I usually have a bold font style and I usually use the font Verdana that's just my liking you could obviously change it to Times New Roman or something a bit more generic if you like um, a second thing you need to do is change it's going to be on vector 2d by default that's quite uh, retro in my opinion you want something a little bit more modern so what you want to be clicking is raster 3d there will be a little down arrow here and you can then obviously change the font for, to what you want so that's pretty much all you need to know here and there's a few other customizations you can do which you can um, there's a little kind of transparent black square behind the letters I usually use this so you, you put, no, it doesn't matter what's going on in the game you'll always have a clear view of my information that I'm displaying but you can turn this off if you don't like it it's called on-screen display shadow so if you turn that off I mean sorry it's called on-screen display fill you turn that off that black square behind the letters disappears so it's all about personal choice this is what I personally like to have just for clarity and um, just ease ease of viewing for for my viewers so that's fine um, I'm just gonna have a look at your comments here so my key 233 says has anyone installed Accelera cooler on um, an R9 390x I can't say I've installed it on a 390x I have installed an Accelera cooler on a 7970 the issue I had with the Accelero is it didn't really do much for calling VRMs now I'm not too sure what the latest Accelero um, kit comes with maybe it has specific um, heat sinks for um, VRMs and I think it has a new a back plate something to call the back of the card now so that might help bring temps down the problem was the GPU temps on the 7970 were amazing but the VRM temps skyrocketed and when they got to a certain threshold basically you'll just get a black screen so in in short the accelerator was kind of a crappy cooler for the 7970 so hopefully um, that's not the issue for you hopefully it works fine uh, Bruce Tom says who is the girl on the wallpaper this is Summer Glow she's uh, I think she's a uh, American born actress she's done things like Firefly um, What's it called? Uh, Terminator Sarah Connor Chronicles. She's also done a few other things. She's quite, uh, she does quite a lot of uh, TV, so you'll see her around. Um, I think she's pretty cute, so I have a few wallpapers of her. So, anyway, down to business. Um, so, I want to start off by having MSI Afterburner open. I do apologize if my um, system sounds are too loud. Please let me know, I'll alter those. So we're not going to go into overclocking now. This is simply going to go to settings and hit the monitoring tab. In the monitoring tab, you'll find all the information that MSI Afterburner can monitor. So GPU information, CPU information, and just general frame frame rate and frame times as well for your games. Now, this is where you choose which information you want to be displayed on your on-screen display. Um, hype YT says hello how you doing man so everything has a tick against it that means that the software is monitoring it but that doesn't mean it's going to be showing up in your on-screen display now there's a little box called show in on-screen display this needs to be checked for that to show up so I'm going to just display this now <laughs> so um, I'm going to get up re I'm going to get up uh, Unigine Valley it's going to run that at 1080p I've got a 3440 by 1440 screen, so 
Um, should I still have plenty of room to to work? So just give me a second here. I'm just gonna move some stuff to the side. So as you can see, my Unigen Valley has nothing being monitored at the moment by the on-screen display from MSI Afterburner. Reason is, I haven't got anything set to show in on-screen display. So the moment I tick show on-screen display for frame rate and I hit OK, that will show up. So now you can see direct 3D11, it tells you what API is being used. It also shows you that my frames per second is being monitored as well. The reason you can see a graph is because I was messing around earlier. Normally you wouldn't see this. Now if you just want it simple and you just want the graph, you just want the numbers, you can change the style just to text. That will just allow it to show just the numbers and the API. But obviously you guys and um, some of the enhancements of MSI Afterburn have asked for things like graphs so you can kind of more easily plot how smooth the game is running. You also want to see things like frame times as well just to see how consistent those frames are. So I can that is information that MSI Afterburner can provide and I don't have any issues with that. Um, just looking at the comments real quick, Mikey233 says um, I get black screens on my 390X so that's VRM, VRM related. I would definitely suggest it is VRM related um, and he also said um, but the uh, uh, the accelerator kit does include little VRM heat sinks. So what you need to do is just apply those um, heat sinks to your VRM area. Um, you can pull that up on Google if you don't know where the VRM area is and you can kind of find more information on that. And just make sure you apply those and um, hopefully this will help keep the VRM cool and that should stop the black screens hopefully. I'm not too sure how effective um, the accelerator heat sinks are but um, the R9 390X is quite a hot card, so hopefully it will be enough. So anyway, getting back to my OSD. So I've got my frame rate here. It's very, very simple. But I want to add frame time. So again, we check the box called show in on-screen display. I check this graph. It's in the graph mode, which I left it at. It won't be for you, but for me, because I've been messing around. I can put this to text as well. And now as you can see, it duplicates, it basically duplicates um, what I'm showing you here, but it has uh, uh, milliseconds at the side rather than FPS. And that's what is used to measure frame consistency. So I don't want it to look like that. I want it to look like a graph. So I'm gonna change that from text to graph. And voila, we have a frame time graph. I want to change the color of that. Now this is when things start getting a bit more advanced. I want this graph to be white so it's a lot easier for you guys to read and I obviously want to increase the, the font as well so you guys can see that easier. What you need to do, there is a little box next to text and it's in line with shown on screen display. You click that box, as you can see the color is kind of a, a light red, almost a pinkish color. All of these I've got headings, so color library, but you want to be changing the graph color library. So uh, for me, this is where we're editing the graph stuff. So it should be somewhere down here. So we got frame time. This is where I want to be changing that to white. That should change it. So as you can see, my frame time graph has now gone white, which is fine obviously also want to include a graph for my FPS so I'll show you how you do that. So I'm highlighting frame rate now I've selected text but if I select graph it will add it in graph form but if you want both you can do something called combo and that basically allows you to have the text and the graph together. So I now have the text and I have the graph as well so I think that's what I'm going to do going forward because the, the issue I had earlier is I couldn't have the API on display and because I do a lot of comparison videos it is kind of useful to have the on-screen display indicate which API is being used whether it's Vulkan, OpenGL or DirectX 11, 10 or 12 so you need to have um, combo enabled for that, that option or just text alone to have that option. If you have graph by itself 
you unfortunately lose for API indication function. So that kind of sucks. Um, just want to have a quick look at your comments now. Um, Nike233 saying, my friend said to cover the SMDs with like some tape they include. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to be shorting out your, your GPU, so take the necessary precautions to protect your graphics card. If they um, include that tape, then apply it to the appropriate area. Uh, Savage says, hey, how you doing, man? Um, dude Senshiro says, have you tried to undervolt your 1080 Ti? Um, no, I haven't tried to undervolt my 1080 Ti because I run my 1080 Ti overclocked, so that would be counterproductive for me, but I probably could if I really wanted to. Anyway, back to my OSD. So right now I'm monitoring frame time and frame rate. As you guys, as you know, I like to monitor my GPU information as well. So we're going to get into that a little bit now. So what I'm going to do is go through all of the statistics that MSI Afterburner can monitor on my system. So now we get to GPU. So we've got the GPU temperature, usage, core clock, memory clock, and memory usage. I want to monitor my GPU temperature, my GPU usage. So everything I want to monitor, I need to check the box called show in on screen display. So check in the box for GPU temperature, check in the box for GPU usage, check in the box for memory usage, core clock, and memory clock. Now I preferably like my memory usage to be the last bit of information that's displayed for my GPU. Now bear in mind, this is how you have your information displayed. So if something's above something, it will be, it will appear first on your graph. So if I had memory usage above GPU core clock, that will show before core clock. So I want memory usage below core clock and memory clock. So I hit OK. You can now see the GPU information. So it says GPU 1, 49 Celsius, 96% GPU load, 1936 core clock, 15 of oh, 5500 memory clock, and two about two gigabytes worth of uh, VRAM being used. Now for someone who knows what the OSD looks like, I can make out this information very easily. But for someone who's seen this um, OSD for the first time, this is like all this information is going to be kind of hard to uh, differentiate. So I need to make this a lot more clearer for for you guys. For you guys, so I'm going to do that now. What I like to do is name all of my fields. So the first thing we're going to do is look at GPU temperature. It's right now it's called GPU one. What you need to do is check the box that says override override group name. I'm going to change this to GPU temp. I hit OK, and now you can see that the GPU temperature is its own separate field. And now I'm going to make the same kind of change for the. <clears throat> do apologize. Still got a little bit of a cold. Not really a cold. I do suffer from hay fever, and summer's upon us now, so pollen levels are a little bit higher than normal so I'm kind of suffering from it which sucks so do apologize if my voice goes every, every now and then or I have to sneeze or I have to cough or something like that okay so we go to GPU usage now check the box again what says override group name I'm going to change this to GPU load hit OK you guys know that this number specifically is monitoring the GPU usage you can call it whatever you like of course I prefer to call it GPU load. Now we come to GPU information. I like to monitor the core clock, the memory clock, and the VRAM usage as well. And core clock and memory clock, I, I opt to call it the name of my graphics card. Another thing I want to point out is if you name a field the same name, it will all appear horizontally in the same row. So I'm going to call my core clock and memory clock GTX actually let's call it NVIDIA GTX 1080Ti I'm just going to copy and paste this rather than write it out all the time so I'm going to hit OK as you can see my memory clock now is called NVIDIA GTX 1080Ti but I also want my core clock to be called the same thing so Obviously, I have to name the field the exact same name. So, 
I'll call that DTX 1080 Ti as well. And as you can see, everything which is named GTX 1080 Ti is just the core clock here, which is 1936, and the memory clock here, which is 55, well, 5508. So those are the stocked clocks for my GTX 1080 Ti. Bear in mind, I do have an aftermarket MSI Gaming X model. So now we're left with the VRAM usage, which is called MEM1. To anyone that's seen this for the first time, this, is, this isn't going to mean anything. So I like to make it a little bit more clear. And I'll call this field VRAM. So it's just so much easier for you guys to understand what I'm trying to show here. So I'll call this VRAM. And I'll hit OK. So there we have it. That's basically the basics. So we've got GPU temp, we've got the GPU load, we've got core clock, memory clock, and we've also got the VRAM usage. All of that information is obviously very useful if you're watching a performance benchmark for one of my usual videos. So let's take a moment to read some of your comments. Bear with me. Um, okay, so <laughs> you guys are not engaging with me in any way so that's fine I don't really need to read anything uh, if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask I am monitoring the chat and I will try to get to your questions as soon as I can so moving on um, I've got all of this information in green you can obviously edit this to your liking I've kept it green because you know it's an Nvidia GPU and I think it's fitting the greens a bit dark and Nvidia's greens a bit more I would say luminous a bit like that so we go to settings we click monitoring all you need to do now, doesn't matter where you are, just click this little uh, option here next to uh, the graph type and then you'll come to all of these colors. And as you can see, you've got graph items. Because these items are not within the graph, probably won't be edited here. More than likely, it's just the top one. So I'm going to change this to a lighter green, something like more of an NVIDIA green like that. I hit OK, apply, and as you can see, all of that information now has changed to a different shade of green, which I feel is a bit more fitting for an NVIDIA GPU. Had this been an AMD GPU, I'd possibly opt to make it red or something like that. So, uh, random more says, sorry off topic, but how stream with the 8700K compared with the 5960X? Um, it's n really non-consequential for me. I used NVIDIA GeForce Experience, which uses the GTX 1080 Ti to do all of the streaming. So had I been using something like OBS, then I would be able to give you an answer to that. But because I don't use my CPU to stream, um, it's basically the same. There's no issues. It's, it's, it's basically a carbon copy of what the 5960X was performing because all of that workload was generated from the GTX 1080 Ti in the first place so I'll let you know what if I try OBS in the future or something like that um, but for now it's, it's exactly the same so uh, moving on I need to adjust these figures obviously they're very very small if you look at the information provided from the GPU temp load core clocks on VRAM these letters are readable but these letters, these numbers are really, really small and anyone that's watching on a smartphone, for example, is not going to be able to read that and I'll just be flooded with complaints about my OSD being unreadable. So this is something I need to take care of. So what I'm going to do is go to um, this little box here. You're going to be using this quite a lot. This basically allows you to make a few more changes to uh, the OSD. It is quite the advanced part, so it's kind of hard to explain. I, I'm still kind of learning it myself, but I know enough to get around. So first thing I want to do is change the size of this font. Now usually it should be named, so we've got alignment library, sizes library, which is an interesting one. It could be that, but I would imagine it's a more of a value than anything. So let's have a look at what my options are. Okay, so we have something called unit size. This is what I believe I need to change. So at the moment it's 50% superscript. I've got no idea what that means. But I'm going to change this to default. In my experience, this matches the same font as your other information. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, all it did really 
was change or just move the information to the right which is a bit strange so that's definitely not the field I want to be changing so let's go back there we're all at unit size wasn't we we've put that to default so let's try graph text size and see what happens change this to default as well and see if that makes any difference okay so that's what we wanted so I've changed it to default graphed graph unit size and as you can see these numbers are now a lot more readable frame rate frame time is a lot more clear and that's obviously what you'd expect from an on-screen display from a benchmark in video you'd be able to read the information a lot more clear so I've now done my GPU information and frame time and frame rate added the graph so you guys can kinda have a idea of how the consistency is or uh, give a better idea of how to smooth the game's playing so let's add some CPU information now what I like to include is my CPU temperature so again check the box showing an on-screen display and I'm gonna obviously rename that I'm gonna call it CPU temp there my CPU usage I try to condense my fields I don't like to have too many fields because it, it looks a bit messy so I'm gonna call my CPU um, core clock uh, my CPU overall usage um, both the same name so I'm gonna call these Intel i7 8700k so let's just go with i7 8700k I'm gonna copy and paste this I don't want to be writing this over and over again so CPU usage and we want to find CPU speed as well there it's that so it's called CPU clock so you want to override group name call it in i7 8700k and you also want to show that in the on-screen display now if I hit OK I now have CPU temperature and I now have the i7 8700k showing 5.1 gigahertz but it's in the complete wrong place I like to have my CPU information below my GPU information so we need to move these around so the first thing I want to do is move this all you got to do is drag and drop so I'm literally holding CPU temperature I'm moving down the graph so it's below my GPU information the last GPU field is VRAM so I need to make sure it's below VRAM there it is memory usage try to get it as accurate as possible let's just put it here for now okay so if I hit OK you can see now CPU temp is now below VRAM and that's exactly where I want it I'm also going to move some more information for example CPU clock that needs to be below um, CPU temperature and also I want to know about my CPU load as well I did call it Intel i7 8700k I possibly forgot to show in on-screen display so I'll find that now here it is so I forgot to check this box which is why the information wasn't showing up I need to also make sure this is below all the GPU information so if everything is in the same um, if everything's in the same line and they call the same name um, basically depending if you've got it above or lower than the information you're trying to display it will obviously be further to the left or further to the right it won't be below so that's how that works okay so we've got CPU clock, CPU usage and CPU temperature if I hit OK that's how it should look so we have i7 8700K core clock and the usage but I'd rather have the usage further to the left so as I was saying earlier all you've literally got to do is switch so now CPU usage is above CPU clock that should move the information around so we now have the CPU usage first and now we have the core clock next to it rather than create a dedicated field called CPU speed I try to condense my fields as much as possible that way it kinda a bit cleaner so you don't have too much information it's just bombarding you with so many numbers it can be a bit um, overwhelming uh, so just want to have a quick look at your comments noodle confusion says no way you're live still no videos on YouTube for Nvidia driver comparison on doom 2016 that is actually an interesting thing um, because the update to Vulkan 
1.1, I believe, Vulkan can now support SLI and multiple GPU. Unfortunately, as you guys know, I no longer have two GPUs. If I did have two GPUs, I would have brought you the test on the same day, but unfortunately I don't. Um, so hopefully someone like, I don't know, dude random possibly, he has loads of GPUs. Someone, if you ask him to do um, a comparison between Vulkan, the first Vulkan and the update, and check how Vulkan performs in SLI, that should be interesting. I believe he still has two GTX 980 Ti's and two GTX 1080 Ti's, so I'm sure he'll be able to do that video if you ask him nicely. So anyway, um, let's move on. So let's add some more information to the CPU because I like to show off um, individual core clock, individual core loads so you guys can kind of see how many cores and threads are being used in that specific application. Now, go back to the monitoring tab and if we go down you can see something called CPU usage 1, 2, 3, 4. This will go all the way down to 12 because I have 6 cores and 12 threads. Now, we need to enable all of these to show in you know, on screen display. Now if I do this just like that, it's going to be very very messy but I'm going to show you how to condense this to make it look very very neat. I was going to make a standalone tutorial to this but it's so much information for me to digest it will just sort of took too much time so I thought I'd just do a live stream and hopefully to sort of help someone out. So I'm going to click OK. So now you can see all of my cores, CPU 1, obviously as you can see there's still some fragments of my old OSD still present so I'm going to make the changes now but that's generally how it would look as you can see my OSD is getting massive now we need to condense this so it's a little bit more neat because again it's just too much information for you to be thrown at you guys and I don't like to overwhelm anyone with just basic information so as I explained earlier if you want to have multiple fields in the same row horizontally they have to have the same name. So what I'm going to do is override the group name. Because the Intel i7-8700K is a 6 core 12 thread processor, I would want to have four lines, um, three lines of four cores. So cores 1 to 4 in the first line, cores 8, um, cores 4 to 8, I mean sorry, 5 to 8 in the second line, and cores 9 to 12 on the third line. So three lines will do all of my cores. So this is how you do that. I'll do the first line here. You want to override group name, call it CPU cores one and then you do dash four. And what you want to be doing is copying that for the first four cores. Two, three and four. So if I hit OK now you can see I have CPU cores 1 to 4 so you can see core 1 has got 44% GPU load and core 2, 3 and 4 not so much so you can tell this isn't really a multi-threaded application but Unigine Valley is quite old now so it's to be expected so I'm going to continue that trend with the second row of cores so if we go to CPU 5 I'm going to call this CPU cores five to eight and I'm gonna rename oh god damn it it's made a quick mistake there I just um, pasted over my changes so I want to do that for core six I want to do that for core seven I want to do that for core eight if I hit OK as you can see we now have CPU cores one to four CPU codes 5 to 8 and 9 to 12 was already done because um, I tried to re revert my OSD back to how it would be at stock but obviously I missed something out so that's already been done for me look how much more neat that looks the only issue is now we have CPU information in the wrong place I need to move all of this information to below the i7-8700K's overall load and core clock so I want to do that now So basically, you can really, really customize this to look any way you want. You can do so much with this that um, I just don't see why anyone would want to use anything else at MSI Afterburner if you're into on-screen displays. It's absolutely 
a godsend when it comes to doing this kind of job and I just don't see anything being better than this in in the near future because it just keeps getting better and better um, so let's just move all of this information, it's going to take a while, it's a little bit tedious so just bear with me just got to make sure your calls are in the right place because you don't want to be monitoring core 12 in 1 to 4 <laughs> because it will all be in the wrong place and it will look very very messy so it does matter um, that it's in order so make sure you get it in order so we've got 1, 2 and 3 and you want to continue that trend all the way down to 12 so 1, 2, 3, 4 almost halfway there It's just good to have something always active so you can kind of monitor all the changes. I, I tend to have um, Unigy in Heaven I mean, or Valley. It's not a very, very heavy um, CPU benchmark, so it's just nice to have to ch watch the changes on the fly. So let's just double check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So we've got 9, 10, 11, and 12 remaining. And then that's the job done. And then we can start moving on to some. Some other changes that I'm I've been thinking about, and I just want to see how they would look in real time before I go ahead and 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 make them permanent. So, so we've got ten here. I wish you could move more than one field at once. That would be very useful because it this is quite tedious. So this is one of the instances it kind of sucks when you've got multiple cores. After this, I'll have a quick look at your comments. Um, as obviously I am working at the moment, so I will get to your comments as soon as I can. I'm really just trying to educate anyone that's interested in this stuff um, as my primary um, obviously use for this video rather than just kind of act like this is a normal live stream so let's just double check this work to make sure it's fine CPU 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 all in the same row so you click OK and voila now you can't tell me that doesn't look very very neat CPU temperature, frames per second C GPU load, GPU core clock and memory clock mm. GPU VRAM usage, CPU temperature, CPU overall usage and core clock and then general thread usage so all of that information is very very useful for someone who's looking at a new game and want to know how it performs or knows what to expect and I've also gone the extra mile to add a frame rate graph so you can kind of plot how smooth the game is running and a frame time graph as well just so you guys can see FPS consistency so another quick look at the comments now see if there's anything I need to have a look at which I don't so the confusion says is the power draw accurate on MSI Afterburner it is it is they've added MSI Afterburner power draw for the CPU now this is a new option this wasn't here before um, MSI Afterburner is now 4.50 this is the latest version this is not a beta this is like a final version and I'll add the obviously the GPU power information now and you guys can see just how much power my CPU is using as you know um, the Intel i7 8700K I think it's a 95 watt TDP part so at stock it should be using around 50 to 60 watts shouldn't be using too much when it comes to like lightly load, light load. So let's have a look. So we have something called, let's find that information here. I've moved around a lot of the information, so I need to kind of move and check. So this one's called CPU power, and this is measured in watts. So I'm gonna override the group name and call it CPU power draw, so you guys can know exactly what it is. So I hit okay. I also got to make sure I've checked the box that says enable showing the on screen display. So let's find the CPU power again. It's a bit higher. Here it is. So check the box showing on screen display. I'm going to move this to the very bottom. This is the last field of information I want to be showing. And as you can see, the Intel i7 8700K is currently using 56 
or 53 watts in the 55 watt range that's extremely accurate and for me to prove that I'm just going to quickly hit uh, let's see this is something called CPU Z um, it has some functions that allow you to benchmark your CPU so as you can see my CPU is running at 5.1 gigahertz what I'm going to do now is hit the stress test and you can now check the CPU power draw number as you can see right now it's at 55 around about 50 watts if I hit the stress CPU we can now see this has gone all the way up to 135 watts in power usage so if you're wondering if it's accurate it's very very accurate so hopefully that's answered any questions or any doubts about how accurate the information is as you can see it's returned back down to around 50 watts now that I've stopped the stress test so now that that's out of the way this is basically what my OST is gonna look like I kind of wanted to add something new to it I'm not too sure what I want to add so far but before I lose all of my hard work I need to show you some more information you save the profile by clicking save so you, you can you got five slots I choose number one as my stock um, profile so there's no overclocking done to the GTX 1080 Ti one thing I want to stress is each profile um, can save a different OSD so for example profile one all of the hard work you've just seen me do that's going to be saved to profile one if I hit profile five it, it will look completely different because I haven't saved this information all over different profiles so you can actually create different OSDs in different profiles so just be careful not to overwrite that information so that's fine um, all of my CPU data all of my GPU data I was considering trying to trying to shoehorn in some GPU clock information just to kind of prove that my CPUs are all are all running at 5.1 gigahertz but I'm not too sure how that would look or how I'd be able to do that and not take up too much space on the OSD so that's something I'll probably um, mess around with privately but I'm gonna jump into a game now just give this a quick test run um, I'm gonna leave my CPU at start because this is not an overclocking tutorial let's just jump into a game let's see what should I play let's play a little bit of Doom just for the sake of it why not Needle Confusion says, can I put my RAM speed in my overlay? That's an interesting question. Um, MSI Afterburner does have the ability to add plugins so you can add information from like HW Info and things like that. So that could be an interesting one to put in. I've just realized I haven't put my my system memory. That's a, a field I do like to monitor. So I'm just going to um, minimize out of Doom once it's loaded up and then I'll add that information as well because obviously you want to know how much system memory is being used as well that's quite useful so as soon as Doom loads up I'll minimize and I'll get that done so let's do that now okay so let's support if this is a bit loud for you I do apologize I'm not too sure how this is sounding on your end but hopefully you can still hear my voice a lot louder than the system sounds so I'm just going to quickly configure um, Doom settings so it's at least my native resolution so bear with me Not too sure why Doom's taking so long to load, but it's I haven't played it in a long time, so maybe there's been some updates or something. <clears throat> so guys, it's taken a long time. Hopefully it's will be done now.
Okay, so let me just quickly disable my on-screen display for one moment. Okay, um, for whatever reason, I can't dis disable it. Maybe there's been an issue where I've resetted everything, so even my on-screen display function doesn't disable with the same key key commands. I want to put this to 3440 by 1440, my default um, resolution. Let me just get that change now. Yeah, the screen is a little, will probably appear a little squash because what's happened is I started for live stream at 2560 by 1440, but because I'm using multi monitors, it was kind of showing a quarter of my other screen, which was not ideal, so I had to put it back to 3440 by 1440. The issue with that is it's doing 3440 by 1440 in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so things are going to look a little bit dodgy, but. Um, it's the best I can do unfortunately. It's probably preferable to having black bars So anyway, I just want to add my system uh, memory usage information not just uh, VRAM from the GPU. So let's have a look where that um, That information is so we call what something called RAM usage. I'm going to change this to System RAM just so you kind of know exactly what it is Check the box that says show in on-screen display, position it where you want. I preferably would want this, um, I would say just under the G CPU information, so the last field, um, just under CPU power. So let's see how that looks. And I also would love to have the color a little bit different from anything else. So we've got system RAM, you can see it's blue, possibly if uh, the on-screen display allows I'd want to change this to orange or something just to differentiate it from the memory from the CPU information as you can see I'm using an Intel CPU so I've opted for a blue color which I think is fitting um, what I would like to do as you can see you have a few things that are monitoring frame rate frame time and then you have some specific groups that you can actually do individual colors for. For example, CPU usage, RAM usage, profile usage, CPU clock. That's actually very interesting. I'm going to change the CPU clock to a different color. That way it kind of stands out. So let's go for... Uh, okay, so there's a color here I'm not using. It's like a, a light red. What you can do is you can go up to the top and add or edit that color. So you can have something like a yellow which will stand out so I want that and I also want to change something I'm not using which is uh, let's see now where's the memory usage I've got to find that bear with me guys like I said I'm I do my best when it comes to explaining this stuff I'm no expert but I know enough to kind of get you guys through it as well so let's change the RAM usage not around let's change for CPU clock to yellow hopefully that will change but let's just have a quick look if that's worked as you can see the CPU clock information even though it's called i7 80 summon 100k because it's been given a, a different instruction to be a different color it's now not in the same line so what I'm gonna do is change my CPU speed information and just call it CPU speed because I'd rather you guys know exactly what core clock I'm running at straight away rather than kind of you know look around to kind of find that information so I'm going to change that and call it I'm just going to call it CPU speed and rather than keep it yellow now that it's its own field I can um, I can change that back to blue I can change that back to blue and then I can also change the memory usage to yellow that way everyone's happy everyone everything looks individual so as you can see the system RAM now is yellow so you can find that instantly different from the CPU information. All the GPU information is in green so you instantly know that's to do with the GPU. I've kept the API in red so you can instantly find FPS and API. So everything's kind of color coded. I think that's kind of um, useful as well. 
So let's just jump into a game. Uh, oh, information I know very, very well. UAC. So, um, here's something else I can show you guys as well. So this is the kind of um, size I like to have my OSD when I'm um, generally doing 3440 by 1440 gameplay. But if you wanted it a little bit bigger, you've got two options. So I'm going to go back to my desktop. So you, you bring up Rebutune a statistics server. This is the program that runs with MSI Afterburner. This actually is responsible for displaying the numbers. But MSI Afterburner is kind of just responsible for um, you know customizing the numbers so you can do two things you can either change the size of the font to number eight or you can increase the on-screen display zoom so if I was to zoom it by one look at the difference in size of the font it's a lot larger now so that's one option if you're not happy with the size I'm just going to play the game now for a little bit. Let me just quickly uh, turn down the game audio. I think it, the music audio might be a bit too loud and possibly even the game audio. So I'm going to drop it by a few percent. So as you can see, this game is very, very multi-threaded. GTX 1080 Ti doing very, very well. Getting very, very good FPS, as you can see. I actually loaded the wrong file. I've completed this game already, obviously. But I've loaded my first file with, um, I haven't got all the weapons. So that kind of sucks. I haven't got all of my abilities either. So my, my play is very, very weak at the moment. That's got to be all of them now. Okay, so that's all of them for this area. I'm just going to continue with the game as if I was playing it properly. May as well just beat this level. Yeah, so you can change the size. Any questions you have now, guys, just ask me and I'll try and do it in real time or I'll try to help you out. But um, this is generally how you use the on-screen display function on Rebutune. Now actually here's a here's a um, something that's actually going to be useful to you guys. You're in game, you don't want to see your on-screen display anymore. What you need to do is go into MSI Afterburner, click settings. Now there's a heading called on-screen display. I have, you have some options where you can add some hotkeys that will just toggle the on-screen display on or off. So for ex example you're going through your game settings and the on-screen display is in the way hit the hotkey or what you've used or what you've designated to remove it and it will disappear and then hit it again just to get it back so you can do that all in real time I've opted to use page up page down and home sometimes it it does not work you have to just close MSI Afterburner and load it again it's a glitch that's been part of MSI Afterburner pretty much from the start so maybe they'll finally fix that some stage so let's just try that out now see so if I hit page up it disappears if I hit page up again it comes back so very very useful feature if you don't want to see your monitoring information anymore so I can see play animations in the chat hey bro how you doing you can see master PC as well he's saying please what's best overclock for R9290X um, really don't know what to tell you um, master PC you really have to 
experiment with your your um, R9290X to find its limits. But I would say most R9290Xs can at least do 1050 megahertz. So 1050 is nothing too serious and you shouldn't need to really increase the voltage for that. So I would recommend a core clock of 1050 megahertz on the core um, and just see how it goes. Okay, so I just picked up some grenades. I can throw those down now. Okay, I don't know if we get any more weapons in this level, but that'll be useful. Well, the GTX 1080 Ti at 3440 by 1440, absolutely butter smooth on this game. No issues whatsoever. Vulcan, with the new update, it would be interesting to see if it's actually made a difference to just general performance, but um, I'll have to look into that myself. And if it's worth doing a video, I might do it, but the main update to Vulcan is that you can now do SLI and, and I, I believe Crossfire as well. So that Anyone that's got um, a multi-GPU configuration, you should try it out and see how it goes. I'm low on ammo. Uh, Master PC, I've got an overclocking tutorial on my channel already, but I'm not gonna individually show you because I don't own an R9290 as it is right now, so it's impossible. Okay, that's fine. Not too sure how to. Okay, that's fine. Basically, I've now got the mod that I can now do customized shot, which is useful. Damn, I'm kind of getting my ass kicked here. Okay, road's clear. Just give me a second, new door confusion, and I'll answer your question. Just need to uh, clear this area. I'm so. I should have really loaded my other file. This feels so weird with a new character. So I basically got no powers. Find a little toy thing. Man, I need some ammo badly.
Alright, we've got a headshot from there. So that's a level complete. So that was basically a demonstration of uh, the MSI Alphabet on screen display. I'm going to move it. Um, just to answer your question before I go, because that is pretty much the end of the stream. Um, Andreas Vetti says, Hello, how you doing, man? Sorry, guys, I'm a bit late with the comments, but I'm going to try and get through them as much as I can. We're messing around with overclocking G damage or GPU. With overclocking, there's obviously risks. Um, the more knowledge you acquire, um, the safer you can make it for yourself. So, example, if you're going to overclock, make sure you don't use excessive voltage. Make sure your GPU is in safe temperature range. And um, try to do things slowly in it, like safe increments. So, that, that's basically the basics. There's always risks to overclocking, but you can minimize those risks by basically doing your due diligence, getting the knowledge. Um, what voltage is common, what voltage is safe and um, try not to save unstable overclock settings that will crash your computer every time you load it so things like that if you take that into consideration it's pretty fine um, I'm just going to go for a few more comments before I go um, let's see Okay, so that's pretty much it. Everyone, you guys are just speaking amongst yourself. So thanks very much for watching, guys. That was just pretty much me showing you um, how to use the on-screen display function, what it can do, how to kind of customize it and tweak it. I get asked that question so much that I thought I'd do a little bit of an updated video just to kind of show you guys how it works. Actually, there is one more thing I'd like to show you, actually, before I go. I think this is kind of, um, this will be kind of useful. So I'm going to quickly fire up my... Unigine Valley again, just to kind of have the on this or screen display on show so you guys can see it. You can actually edit the thickness of these graphs. So my graphs are quite quite um, slim, but you can actually change the size of the graphs as well. And you can actually change the type of the graph if you want as well. So let me quickly show you how you do that. So go back into the monitoring tab. What you want to do is uh, highlight the, the graph that you want to change. For example, frame rate, that's one of the graphs I'm using. So what you can do is change the, um, the information type. As you can see at the moment, it's text. You can actually change that to a bar chart. So if I click OK, it should change. But um, sometimes you actually have to change it in the advanced option. So let's find for frame rate chart where is it where is it now frame time frame rate okay this is a combo this is a bar chart it possibly would only work as a single graph so let's just double check that no that's not working that is very interesting so Sorry about it guys, I don't know how to, I've done it before, I'm not too sure why it's not working today. I'm just going to put that back to how I had it before. But I will show you how to change the thickness of the graph at least. So let's just edit the frame rate graph. It's around about, I'd say two columns thick. We can make it about three or four columns thick, that way the graph will show an even greater drop in, in differences of the FPS. So for example, if you went from 90 to 100 you'd clearly see that drawn on the graph whereas it's really you know subtle because the, the graph isn't that thick so what I want to do is show you how to change that so what you want to do is you want to go down to something called a graph and now it will say width it will say height obviously we both know what those things are so we want to be changing the height of the graph because we're happy with the width all the width means is you can move these numbers all the way to the edge so right now it cuts off here so if I was to change the width for example which I will do actually let's see what happens if I put it to a 
positive number. So it's minus 32. If we put it to zero, let's see what happens. So if I put it to zero, completely disappears. But if I put it to, let's say, minus 50, it's now moved all the way close to the edge of the graph. So this graph is almost, let's say, quarter of the size longer now. Let's just get it right to the edge. And let's keep it in line with all the numbers here because I don't want to make the graph bigger than it needs to be. So I want to change that. Rather than minus 50, let's make it minus 40 and see how that looks. Nope, no good. It's too small now. No, it's not minus 40, it's just 40. So let's try minus 40. So it's just a few more. So if we put it to about minus 42, that should be in line with all the rest of the numbers and that will be perfect for me. So let's try that. So minus 42 is just about in line with um, all the information. I think that looks a lot more uniform than it was before. So now to move on to the thickness of the graph. So just to recap, um, a negative number is longer, a positive number is shorter, shortest being zero, the longest being minus negative whatever you need it to be. So um, for me, negative 42 works pretty well. Uh, let's adjust the height now and imagine the trend continues. So if we have it negative, it's more thick. If we have it positive, it's slimmer. That's what I'm guessing. So let's try a negative 10 and see what happens. See a negative 10. <laughs> As you can see, the graph is extremely thick now. It's like more than quadrupled in width and that's obviously not desirable. It takes up way too much um, space on the screen. I previously had it minus three or minus two, I believe. So let's try minus four instead. As you can see, that's a lot more feasible and uh, functional, I would say. So minus four, obviously the graph's a lot thicker now. You can see more variations to uh, the, the frames per second fluctuation. So someone might actually like that rather than have all of this information, they possibly may just want um, GPU speed, GPU temp, CPU temp, and they want these two graphs, so um, they will have a lot more space to play with than I have, so I've kind of got to be a bit more conservative with the space I have remaining, so I'm going to change that from minus four back to minus three. I think minus three for me is a good fit, and as you can see, the thickness of the graph has reduced even more. Again, if you want to change the graph size, literally just pull up on-screen display from um, Rebutune and Statistics Server. You can either change the zoom or you can change the font. Um, I'm also going to change the zoom. And now this is generally the size I use when I'm um, doing some benchmarks at 1440p. So that is literally all the information I can show. There is one more thing I guess I could show. Uh, but this really only applies to guys that make videos. Um, I've been a victim of people downloading my stuff and re-uploading it as their own. And I like to kind of brand my stuff so you at least know this is originally my work. So what you need to do is click monitoring, click this tab, and you have something called your active layout selection. You can change that from classic to modern, um, to modern mono, to modern web. I always use modern. Now there's something called, let's quickly find it. Um, let's try and find that. It's something called Prolug. You can actually input some custom information here. This is where I input my name, bang for buck, PC Gamer. This will be at the top of your on screen display. Obviously, you want to move this more into the middle. So if I click apply and OK, you will now see my name at the top of the graph. The reason I put this there is so, if, for example, someone stole one of my videos and up re uploaded it without any editing you'd at least know that this gameplay came from me so that's how you do it so that's me giving up the game guys I've literally shared with you everything I know in terms of the on-screen display functions if you have any uh, questions obviously you can leave the questions in the, the live stream video that will go live once it's processed and I'll try my best to help you out but hopefully this has been helpful to anyone that's just not that familiar with how to use the MSI Afterburner 
on-screen display function. I'll, I'll obviously provide links to my software as well in, in the description box once the video has been published. But that is it, pretty much it for me guys. Hopefully this has been helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.